What's going on, guys? Welcome into the Cleveland Browns Report. We have a loaded show for you guys today, so be sure you stick with me. From Brandon Cooks potentially going to Cleveland, looks like the Browns are interested in him. And not only Cooks, but also interested in bringing Jadeveon Clowney back. We've got an update on that front. Plus, PFF dropped their latest mock draft, so we'll check out who they have the Browns going with in round two. And Cleveland made a move, free agency. So how about we talk about that towards the end of the show? But first, let's kick things off with the Brandon Cooks trade rumor. So Brad Steinbrook does a great job of keeping up with the Browns and the Browns' Twitter spaces tweeting out, the Browns have had talks with Houston Texans regarding receiver Brandon Cooks at times this offseason per a league source. Don't you kind of wish that maybe, I don't know, the last time they traded with Houston, they had these talks too. Probably thought a little, little bit ahead. But here's what uh, Brad put in an article regarding these trade rumors, saying the Browns have had talks with Houston Texans regarding receiver Brandon Cooks at times this offseason, a league source tells the Orange and Brown Report. The, is, the extent of these talks is unknown, but the Browns have called on the former first-round draft pick as they continue to explore options. So Brandon Cooks entering the final year of his contract with the Houston Texans, which is going to carry a $12.5 million base salary. So that gives you an idea. Now, it's not always concrete, but a rough idea of if the Browns traded for Cooks, what they could be on the hook financially for. He's also got a $16.2 million cap hit. Now, that does not guarantee that the Browns traded for Cooks. They're going to have a $16 million cap hit. Money can be moved around, put in signing bonus. The Texans could hang on to it. Cooks has been a traveling man. Started his career off in New Orleans, went to New England, went to the Rams, and now with Houston, traded a handful of times already. But despite all that, I think he's actually been one of the most underappreciated sneaky receivers. Over 1,000 yards in six of his eight seasons. Last five years, two seasons in Houston. I mean, 1,000 yards last two years. Last season with Terod Taylor and Davis Mills, for anyone on the Texans to get over 1,000 yards, pretty good. All right, And he's been a quiet Iron Man as well. I mean, he's never missed more than like two games the last couple seasons. So I get he had that down year in 2019. I don't know what Sean McVay was trying to do there. Gave him a huge extension and then just didn't give him the targets. Maybe blame it on Jared Goff, but I think Cooks has been a quietly underappreciated receiver in the NFL. So if a trade were to happen, I think this is an idea of what it could shake out to be. Now, it looks a little strange because you're thinking, hey, Matthew, you're telling me the Browns gave up a fifth for Amari Cooper, but Brandon Cooks goes for a fourth when Amari Cooper is clearly better? you got to remember that GMs really look at the cap hits, the salaries. And Amari Cooper was making $20 million in Dallas. The Cowboys didn't want to pay him that much. And once word got out that they were going to release him, kind of like how every team has the Browns by the balls right now with Baker Mayfield, everyone knew that the Cowboys would just take him for anything anyone would offer because they had to release him eventually anyway. So just keep that in mind with this trade. But what do you think about it? Would you do this trade if you were the GM? If you're Andrew Barry and the Texans say, give us your fourth and we'll give you Brandon Cooks, are you accepting or declining that? Let me know in the comment section below what you would do. Personally, I think I actually go the decline route. And it's not because I think Brandon Cooks is at the end of his career or he's not that good. But there is something about when you've got your own draft picks, that means you're going to get a rookie player, maybe a rookie wide receiver in the fourth round, with more control, meaning Cooks is on the last year of his deal. You get a rookie, you got him for a couple more seasons than just one, and way cheaper. And I think the Browns may already be out kicking their coverage a little bit on some of these paychecks. I mean, they've got Denzel Ward who wants an extension, Garrett, Watson, Cooper, Chubb who got an extension, Teller, Batoni. I mean, there's a lot of players, a lot of mouths that have to be fed here. You want to add Cooks to that list? Why not just go get a rookie who's cheaper and you got him for longer? That's kind of my two cents on this. But what do you think about this question? Should the Browns make another trade? Are you kind of traded out? Or are you like, you know what? It's fun. I like the notification. I want more content on trades. Why for yes and for no if you'd like to see the Browns make another splash trade. Switching gears here. Let's talk about the latest pro football focus mock draft. I got to be honest with you guys. I like PFF, but sometimes I'm like, what the hell are they thinking? Now, we'll show you who they have the Browns picking in just a second at 44. But here's who they had on the board. 
Now, this is not my picks, but here's who was left of kind of the bigger names. Ajabo. Logan Hall could help on that interior defensive line. Nick Bonito out of Oklahoma. Drake Jackson, another edge rusher. And the best receiver out there was the Memphis Tigers' Calvin Austin. They went receiver heavy in this mock draft. So not a lot of good you know, ball catchers out there when the Browns were on the clock at round two. Before I show you the pick, I want to tease you with just one more question. What position should the Browns draft first? We'll skip past the name for a second. Let's just nail, nail down a position. You want it to be a wide receiver? That's where I'm at. Or defensive tackle. I think those are the two options. Now, I will say if a lot of the good receivers are gone, yes, I go defensive tackle. But let me know what you think because PFF, they went edge rusher. They went with the linebacker out of Oklahoma with that second round pick. So let's break him down a little bit. He's very athletic. He's got quick feet. He doesn't have the best strength, though. I mean, he's not going to push over or an offensive tackle and bull rush you to the quarterback. He's going to rely on speed over strength. That's kind of his MO. Another really interesting thing about him is I kind of look at him like a chess piece, maybe like a knight, where you can move him around the defensive line. I mean, I'm watching his tape, and you're seeing him line up at the edge rusher spot, and then you're seeing him line up more at that Mike interior linebacker position. He can be moved all over. He can uh, be a Swiss Army knife for you. Not, not all that's going to translate to the NFL, but you like that versatility out of a player. I wouldn't say he's like JOK, but he's maybe a JOK light. He's also a little undersized, speaking of light, just six foot three, 248 pounds, but that did not stop him from putting up good numbers for the Sooners in 2021. Seven sacks, 15 tackles for loss. The guy was a workhorse for a handful of seasons for Lincoln Riley at Oklahoma. So here's what Pro Football Focus had to say about the pick. Since 2020, Benito ranks first among all FBS edge defenders in pass rush grade 94.6. Pass rush, pass rush win rate 27.8% and pressure rate 22.2%. He may serve as a designated pass rusher to start, but he can provide value in that role. Grade the pick for me. A, B, C, D, or F. I'm not crazy about the pick because here's the thing with pro football focus. They put out these like metrics that they create and then I have no idea how they get to them. I, I don't know where they come up with some of these numbers, but I just sort of blindly trust them because... It sounds scientific, so I just roll with it. I'd probably give it a B minus, honestly. I'd rather see them go a different direction. I'll give that a B minus. I will give this new Deshaun Watson's jersey an A. So if you want to get yourself the greatest uh, Browns quarterback in history potential jersey right now, make sure you do it because Deshaun Watson jerseys are finally in stock. Order one now because they're already having trouble keeping up with demand. If you wait to buy one, Good chance you may end up waiting until the season starts, until you receive one. Listen, don't be the guy at First Energy Stadium in the Muni lot week one and you don't have the best jersey out there. So make sure you get it. Chatsports.com slash Watson jersey. Links in the comments and in the description of the video. Hook yourself up with a brand new Deshaun Watson jersey. Do it now because the wait is only going to get longer and they've got him in stock for a little bit of time period here at Fanatics. Next up on the Cleveland Browns report, the latest on the Jadeveon Clowney news and rumors because we touched on him in our video yesterday. And then shortly after, Jeremy Fowler at ESPN said on SportsCenter, the Browns are pushing for Clowney. I'm going to kind of say what I said yesterday, which is I'm sure Andrew Barry would love to have Clowney back. It's about the right price, though. I saw a report that before the Browns traded for Watson, they were looking at a two-year, $24 million contract. I don't think the Browns can do that anymore. My guess is looking more like a two-year, $20 million contract. So if I'm clowny, do I want to go back to Cleveland where I had nine sacks last season, triple what I had the previous two years combined, or do I want to wait a little longer, see what more money's out there, maybe get paid an extra mil or two elsewhere? Personally, clowny, roll it back with Miles Garrett. Get that duo back and going because Clowney not only helps the Browns, which is getting another pass rusher, but Tack McKinley ruptured his Achilles. He helps the draft process altogether because the Browns can sign Clowney potentially, go into the draft, and not have edge rusher be one of their biggest needs. Because at this point, I mean, it kind of is. 
You you lost McKinley and uh, Clowney, Weaver, MIA. I, I I don't know who the next real Porter Gustin. I don't know who the next true uh, defensive end would be. So you can kind of skip over that process in the draft if you bring Clowney back. Not skip over, but at least delay it to the day, third day of the draft. But Dog Pound, do your thing. Let's spam 90. You guys show out every single time I ask to put the jersey numbers down below. Because I honestly think, I mean, the last video got over 10,000 views as we're uh, recording right now. So good chance someone in Clowney's camp is just name searching on Twitter, on YouTube, seeing the love, reporting back to, Je to Jevion, and getting him back to the Browns. We're going to wrap up the show with uh, some interesting free agency news here. Pains me a little bit, but the Browns did sign a punter, Corey Borjekes, uh, Borjekes. He had the longest punt in 2020 and in 2020 21. So comes originally from Buffalo, then goes to the Packers on a one-year contract last season. Or only served one year with Green Bay, and now he's on the street. Browns weren't going to go back with Cole Quit. The Scottish hammer is done, so he signs a two-year contract with Cleveland. Mixed emotions on this. I get it. He's got a cannon of a leg. He had the longest punt last season. But if he was that good, don't you think the Packers would have held on to him and not signed Pat O'Donnell from the Bears in free agency? Right? Isn't there something to be said about that? Teams don't let just good special teamers walk. If they're pretty cheap, because I'm guessing it wasn't a numbers issue, you know, it's not like O'Donnell's going to be making that much less than Bohorquez in Cleveland. And also, I still want Matt Arizia, okay? The punter out of San Diego State, I think the Browns should absolutely draft him. But after this move, probably not going to happen. I mean, how often do you sign and draft a punter in the same year? Probably going to be a bit of an overkill for the punter position. So, my punter dreams and your dreams, because a lot of us, uh, you know, in the comment section, we're hoping for this, but I don't think it's going to happen. So let's end the video on this note. Speaking of special teams, I'm going to challenge you guys here to name your favorite special teams player of all times, but you can't say Josh Cripps. Like, that's just too easy. If you want, we'll let it slide, but try to think outside the box. Give me another one. Give me your favorite special teams of all time out Josh Cripps. All right, that's going to do it for us here on today's show. We'll catch up with you later with the latest Browns news and rumors.